So now we're on to part two of this same lesson, <clears throat> and we'll do two other problems that just are a little bit different than the first two. So taking a look at this first one here, we've got part or letter C, and here what's different is that the Y is not right next to the X. And we always want the y and the x term on the same side when we're using these xy intercepts to graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this 4y over to the other side. So I do an opposite operation to do that. So we got to look at the sign out in front. No sign, so that means it's positive 4y. So I'm going to take 4y away from both sides. Now you can't take the 4y from the 2x because they are different, have different variables. So we're going to write this as two terms. So it's negative 8 to start with equals, and then I can write down negative 4y plus 2x. See, it's a positive 2x, so that's why I wrote plus 2x here. I was taking away 4y, so that's why I wrote minus 4y. So now we're ready to solve, kind of like what we had done on the other problems. We're ready to find that x-intercept. And so remember, the x-intercept, we're going to end up setting y equal to 0. So we're going to cancel out this term here. We're going to make it equal 0. So all I'm left with is that negative 8 equals 2x. And that's what I'm going to write down in the next line here. Underneath x-intercept, set y equal to 0, I'm going to write down negative 8 equals 2x. Again, that y term canceled out. So now we're ready to solve further by getting rid of that coefficient. Divide by 2 on both sides. So when I do that, now I'm left with negative 4 equals x. So what we've got is x is negative 4 when y is 0. So now we've got the x-intercept. Again, what we have to do first is move everything over so it's on one side. So now we're ready to solve for that y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept is when we're going to set x equal to 0. So when I set x equal to 0, this term cancels out. And so I just I can cross that off. You'll see how I'm only left with that negative 4y equals negative 8, because again, that x term canceled out. So that's what I'm going to write down. I'm going to write down negative 8 equals negative 4y. And so now I can use another opposite operation to cancel out that coefficient and then divide by negative 4. And so when I do that, I will be left with just my y term, and it will equal positive 2 because the two negatives cancel out. So I'll go ahead and rewrite the answer is an ordered pair. So when x is 0, I get 2, positive 2, for y. Now we've got two points. We go ahead and plot those two points on our coordinate plane. Starting with that first one, this time I go four spaces to the left because it was a negative 4. And again, I'm right on the x-axis. I don't go up, I don't go down. I'm right on the x-axis. That's the x-intercept. 0, 2, over 0 spaces up 2 spaces y-axis gives me that point there. Now I can go ahead and draw the line between those points. And doing so gives me my answer. I put some arrows at the end, show that the line goes on forever in those two directions. All we need is two points to connect and make a line. Well, let's take a look at this one. This one we have y and x on the same side. Difference is we don't have a coefficient out in front of the x except for a minus sign. There's always a number we can put in between the minus and the x2. We'll talk about that in a little, see if you, a little bit, see if you can remember. But we'll start by finding intercepts. We'll start with the x-intercept. And so remember, for the x-intercept, I'm going to set y equal to 0. I'm going to cancel out that term. It's going to be gone. So all I'm left with is, with that, is that x term, but it's a minus x equals 2. So let's go ahead and write that part down minus x equals 2. Well, do you remember that number we could put between that minus sign and that x term? What was a 1 if you don't see a number there? And so that's like a negative 1 I want to get rid of. So you can do one of two things. <clears throat> you can either divide or multiply by a negative. Or 
or negative 1. In this case, I'll just divide by negative 1, and it will cancel out that minus sign in front of the x. So all I'm left with is x equals now negative 2. So my ordered pair that represents that point would be negative 2 comma 0. When I put 0 in place of y, I get negative 2 for x. Well, we got one more intercept to find, so we can graph this line, and that is the y-intercept. And what we'll do is we'll set x this time equal to 0. So we're canceling out this term. It's going to be gone. So all I'm left with is that 1 half y will equal 2. So let's go ahead and write down exactly what I just read off there. 1 half y equals 2. Well, we did a problem like this last part. We got rid of that fraction as the coefficient. We multiplied by something. What did we multiply by to cancel out a fraction that's in front of a variable? Well, hopefully you said the reciprocal. That's what we're going to multiply by. Reciprocal of 1 over 2 is 2 over 1. And then you'll see those 2's canceling out. Well, we've got to do the same thing to the other side. The reciprocal, 2 over 1, is the same thing. It's just 2. So I'm going to multiply by 2, and now I'm left with y equals 4. So my ordered pair that I'll write down is x is 0 when y is 4, or y is 4 when x is 0. So now I've got my two points. So I'll plot those points. x intercepts negative 2, so I go over two spaces to the left, put a dot there. And then my y-intercept's positive 4, so I've got to go up 4 spaces. So it's 2, 3, 4 right there. And so now I can connect those two points with a line. And that's it. Arrows at the end showing that it goes on forever in those two directions. So that's graphing using xy-intercepts. The key is always make sure that you get x and y on the same side so that you're left with just a one-step equation you set the other variable equal to zero.